Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Atlantic Lithium Limited Investor Presentation. Throughout this recorded presentation, investors will be in listen-only mode. Questions are encouraged. They can be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab that's just situated on the right-hand corner of your screen. Please just simply type in your questions and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during the meeting itself. However, the company will review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it is appropriate to do so and these will be available via your InvestorMeet company dashboard. Before we begin, I would like to submit the following poll and I would now like to hand you over to Executive Chairman Neil Herbert. Good morning, sir. Good morning to you and thanking everybody for attending today. Uh, we look forward to taking you through our presentation, giving you our quarterly update, and indeed where we've gone in the last year and where we're going now. Uh, on the team today, we have Amanda, we have Keith, we have Len, all of which I'm sure are familiar to you, but we're also joined by Henry today, who's going to be doing part of the presentation with us. So just taking it from the top then, I will flick through the slides to our opening slides. So what have we achieved in the in the last year? And some of you remember, you know, we've been on the AIM market for quite some time. The beginning of the, the financial year, we actually went out onto the ASX as well. We also have a lot of Australian shareholders, as many of you know. Um, so we very much welcome them and they've been trading the, the stock quite actively. So we're now actually trading on two markets if you want to if you want to dabble in both markets, you're more than welcome. So at the beginning of the year, we put out our PFS. So this is our preliminary analysis for the feasibility study with some very robust numbers. Uh, we moved on from that very quickly to putting our mining lease application in, which we are now completing that stage and expect to receive our mining lease very shortly. Uh, Keith Miller joined us, a very important time for us because Keith obviously represents one our move towards mining and indeed provides a lot of experience in that field and he's been building the team around him. And also we began our, our initial engineering studies for the project, which are also a very important landmark date for us. So in terms of the resource, you will remember we had a scoping study with 20 million tons by the beginning of this calendar year. We moved that up to 35 million tons, uh, most of which now in the reserve category. So very much included in our mine plans. Lots of potential there to continue to grow. We'll be talking about that a little bit later. And indeed, we did more drilling and we've continually done more drilling on the project as we move forward and looking forward to demonstrating those results as we go through the rest of the year. Finally, in the, the last quarter of the year, Keith moved up to the CEO role and delivered us a very robust DFS, which he's no doubt going to remind us all of the fantastic numbers there are in that. And Len has been taking on the role of Chief Geologist and Director of New Business. So he's going to tell you about how we're going to expand our operations going forward. And this is a great slide. Now, this shows where, where we're going with this company in terms of the project that we have. And as you can see, in terms of the lithium spodumene producers in the world, we're set to become one of the 10 biggest overall and a very significant player in Africa. So you can see the scale of this project against all the competition out there. Um, you know, we stack up very well against the Australian competition, but I think we stand out very well against uh, the African projects out there. And obviously we hope one day to expand our production still further. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to our CEO, Keith. Thank you, Neil. And maybe if I just remind investors what we're planning to do today, uh, we've got only a couple of slides. We want to leave as much time as possible for the Q&A. So it's all new information we'll show you today, a bit of a fresh slide deck. Um, so I'll kick off with a project update. So essentially, there's six work streams we're currently working on. Uh, the first one is uh, we've actively been preparing to submit our EPA. Um, as Neil just mentioned, uh, we believe our ML is still imminent um, within the next couple of weeks, if not earlier. Uh, so what we've done in the meantime is we've prepared the scoping report in terms of reference, which is two key documents required uh, by uh, the EPA regulator. Um, so that's ready to go. So the moment we get our ML, we can submit that uh, the next day. Uh, secondly, what we've been doing is we've been looking at the long lead items uh, as well as that transmission line. Uh, many of you are aware we've got a high voltage power line running across site. Uh, we have de-risked that to some extent with the current infill drilling we're doing in Awaya South too, and that's just to buy us a bit of time uh, so we don't need that relocation immediately uh, because Awaya South too is sufficiently uh, separated to, uh, geographically from that power line, so that enables us to start 
a little bit further away. Uh, but in the meantime, we've uh, progressed the EPA permit of that particular line. And so we now have received uh, that EPA conditional approval. Uh, we're currently in negotiation with landowners to acquire the land for the new relocation route uh, that that power line is going to follow. Then the third thing we're doing, and this is a very important activity, is we're building the team out. Um, as, as we speak today, we have 24 vacancies uh, in the company, uh, and we're actively filling that as quick as possible. We've also had a number of new starters uh, join us both in uh, Perth as well as in Sydney, uh, and indeed in Ghana as well. The team in Ghana has almost doubled uh, from this time last year. Um, so really good to see uh, that team expand. Uh, the, in the fourth work stream we've got going on, uh, we're looking at the flotation. So many investors would have seen uh, the DSO market, for example, the low-grade market is taking stress at the moment under current prices. Um, as you're aware, uh, we have a low-grade product that we intend to sell, uh, but we're also de-risking that further by looking at uh, putting that through a flotation plant and upgrading that to a concentrate. Uh, that's very important to make the project robust against uh, a cyclic market, uh, and then also it collects a much higher uh, re return uh, from a concentrate perspective compared to uh, a low-grade product. And then we're furthering developing the feldspar work. Um, so Len and his team has been busy to define the MRE. Um, we're expecting to deliver that later uh, in the half next year. And then we will also update uh, our DFS now, including uh, the feldspar potential, uh, pending that uh, feasibility study that we've commissioned at uh, the university of Mines and Technology in Tarqua, Ghana, uh, to conduct for us. Um, then the fifth activity that's going on at the moment is the project build team. So uh, we've now narrowed down um, the engineering houses that we're looking to uh, partner with to three majors. Uh, so those uh, tenders are going to go out in the next couple of weeks. And then we're looking to award that contract towards uh, the end of, end of this year. Uh, starting with detailed engineering in early January. Uh, but we, like I mentioned, we have already identified a long lead item, so we don't need to go through detailed engineering to the nth degree before we order those long lead items. We, we already have the equipment list that we require. And in the last work stream that we're focusing on at the moment is our key contracts. Uh, so actually one of the longest lead items we have is mining equipment. Um, so we've now narrowed it down from eight participants at the start of the year to only three participants uh, and we're now going into a detailed competitive tender process with those three uh, mining contractors uh, to provide mining services for us. Uh, the build slots uh, we want to secure, it's about an 18-month lead time at the moment to get mining equipment in uh, and that's if you if you know people. Uh, so we're looking forward to, to awarding that contract um, sort of towards the third quarter next year, maybe the fourth quarter, early fourth quarter, uh, to have that equipment on site uh, ready for bulk mining uh, prior to commissioning of the DMS uh, early 2026. Uh, we are going to separate our modular mining activities. So the contract for the modular mining activity is going to be separate from the main uh, fleet, and that's mainly because of the size of that fleet, and we are able to secure that fleet uh, quite readily available in, in Ghana as it is at the moment. So I'll be happy to take some questions afterwards, but for now I'm going to hand over to Amanda uh, to take us through uh, the corporate update, please. Thanks, Keith. Look, it's been another busy year for Atlantic on the corporate side. Um, you know, the, the first one being the um, commencing trading on the ASX. That was a nine-month process to kind of get us listed, uh, dual listed on the ASX. So um, that's been um, going steadily along. I see, we, we seem to kind of balance each other out between AIM and ASX and um, we have a slow movement of um, shareholdings from AIM to the ASX, as everyone remembers. We do have a strong core um, Australian shareholders and they have been moving their shares across to the ASX. Um, we completed our DTC eligibility on our OTC market. You know, that's a compliance activity to ensure that brokers in the US can actually buy and sell the Atlantic shares. 
Um, and as part of that, we were in the best um, 50 of the OTCQX as well in terms of shares traded. Um, it's only um, fairly fairly small, but we do have some um, movement through there and we're hoping that kind of um, increases with time. Um, we joined the International Lithium Association um, and that's really about um, helping kind of create this industry and being part of the conversations um, and we attend um, the meetings that are held on that where we can. They're usually held with conferences so it makes it easier for us to t attend. Um, importantly, we um, Keith uh, Muller and um, Patrick Brindle joined the board during the year um, and after our DFS was released, Pete Mont... Um, uh, gave their notice to say that they're moving to the next stage and um, willing to commit their first 70 million of funding, which you know really um, helps us to ensure um, ensure the funding of the project. Um, we have a great relationship with Pete Mon, and that kind of um, came through with that notice as well. Um, look, one of the most exciting things really is the MIF investment, um, which I'll kind of talk about in a second. And obviously, I'll go through a little bit about the offtake process. I've got a couple of slides on this, so I'll take you there. So the MIF investment came through um, about a month ago now, um, and that's a really important milestone for us. Um, it kind of stands Ghana alone, I suppose, in Africa in terms of um, actually being part of um, investing in their projects, um, and that was key for um, MIF, and they wanted to be part, part of the project, and it also helps us um, de-risk the funding, plus having our Ghanaian um, shareholder is really important to us as well. Um, you know, we will be um, a Ghanaian company um, and, you know, that it helps our cash balances as well at the Atlantic level. So it's um, it was a really exciting um, investment that they did and, um, you know, we're very happy to have them on board um, as we kind of move through the different stages of the project. Uh, just a quick kind of look at the funding. So how MIF, you know, at the moment it's a non-binding, um, a non-binding um, terms of agreement. Um, we're doing the final contracts now, um, but what that means is so for the first um, seventy million of capex comes from Piedmont. MIF's contribution will be twenty-eight. Um, they their six percent holding is a contributing interest, so they'll contribute another eleven. These are all numbers based on the one eighty-five from the DFS. Um, that leaves a remaining of 76 million in capex, of which um, Piedmont and Atlantic share that 50-50. So at present, um, our requirement is um, circa 38 um, to 40 million uh, US dollars. Um, so if I move on to the offtake process. So I talked about this at the last um, webinar. We were getting set up with a um, major investment bank. Um, which we have done now and we've got this process underway. Um, basically, um, the kind of key um, terms of reference for us is really um, attracting funding offers um, to ensure a warrior's development and de-risking the project. Um, we want to secure a world credential partner. We want someone that's um, in the existing battery supply chain. Um, and we're also, you know, this this partner will be effectively, um, you know, one of two that we have, and so we want to ensure that we have a, um, you know, broader strategic collaboration with the partner. It won't just be someone that takes the offtake. Um, we will have some offtake available for the spot market as well. This won't be everything for the 50%, um, and it will be for, a, you know, a three- to five-year period. So this kind of gives you just a bit of an indicative um, timeline of the process. Um, I had hoped to be done by Christmas, but I was being quite optimistic. It is about a seven-month process, and because of Christmas, um, it will go into the new year. But what we want to ensure is that we find the right partner, we find the um, right funding for um, Atlantic and, and the AWARE project, and to kind of realising the full value of this. So effectively, Atlantic's um, uh, production that's coming online is one of the biggest that is going to come online in the next three to four years. There is a little bit um, coming from other brownfield sites that are ramping up um, their production levels and a couple of greenfield sites. It's a little bit difficult to see exactly what will be available because a lot of that's already spoken for, um, but we'll definitely be one of the few um, that are coming on board definitely at that size. 
um, over the next three to five years. And what that means is that um, we have a quite broad um, partner uh, base through this offtake process um, and it can go into one train. So it's not kind of a small portion of production that can go off. They can actually um, put it through one train in the conversion plant so it makes it um, an attractive proposition for a lot of people. Okay, so passing on to Len. Great, and um, thank you, Amanda, and welcome, everyone. It's great to be back on this platform and giving you an update. It's been a huge year for Atlantic um, and a transformational one as we, as, we, as we move from explorer to developer. But notwithstanding, uh, it's been a very exciting year for exploration and resource development, and um, we've announced some really significant drilling steps um, from our 18,500-metre uh, drilling program uh, for the first half this year, and we've got a lot of news flow coming up through the second half of this year. So we've had some significant drill incepts, as um, Keith mentioned, uh, with folks in, focusing on uh, resource, um, increasing confidence around resource on the Awuya South 2 deposit, which is in the southern end of our, our, our um, pegmatite swarm. And that's for providing optionality around mine scheduling. And we've, you can see some of those drill intercepts there, 48 metres at 1.3%, 57 metres at 1.17, 54 at 1.14. So they're, um, they're providing a lot of confidence in terms of the conversion, but also for potential for resource growth. Uh, and indeed, we're still seeing mineralisation open a long strike and that depth at that particular deposit. But part of that drilling program where we've drilled or we've reported to date in the order of um, 13,800 metres is also on other targets for resource growth. And you can see some of those results there at Awuya Northeast and Okwesi as well. Um, so um, we're pretty excited about that. And um, we are currently also looking at um, additional drilling options around that where we see that mineralisation is still open. Um, for further resource growth. So uh, news to come in that regard. But um, it's not just the resource upgrade and increase in confidence level, it's also the regional exploration, which is an important factor of our, of our, of our working ethos. So um, we focused really only within roughly 3% of our portfolio uh, full area. So roughly 15 square kilometers of a 560 square kilometer portfolio. So some really exciting um, work to be done within the remainder of that portfolio where we focused on um, soils in the Cape Coast license uh, in addition to high resolution um, heliborn magnetics and radiometrics. And uh, we've also completed in the order of 20,000 metres of auger. We're finalising that. Um, and we also, as you are aware, trialled passive seismics uh, within our mine corridor area, which in our case, you know, wasn't um, highlight or wasn't picking up the targets that, um, in terms of thickness. Uh, so it wasn't able to see um, thicker pegmatites, unfortunately. And we felt there was more value to be had by drilling uh, with the drill bit. So hence, uh, while we focused on, on drilling more so than with the passive seismics. Um, and it, it's not just in Ghana. We also have our license applications pending in Ivory Coast, uh, the Agbaville and Rubino licenses, where the historic uh, lithium occurrence is reported. And we're working hard on that now to get those granted uh, so we can get exploration underway over there. And additionally, we're also looking at regional opportunities um, in Ghana and within the region in Africa broadly uh, that will you know, offer um, strategic acquisitions that make uh, strategic sense in that regard. So an exciting um, you know, half year ahead and certainly uh, with a lot of news flow to come. And uh, with that, I'll um, pass you on to Henry. Thank you. Thanks, Len. Um, a few points that I wanted to touch upon really on, on this slide. Um, I think the first thing to note really is that this is a project for Ghana and Ghanaians. Uh, we have an excellent team in Ghana um, who are very proud and very driven to be part of this project. Um, we've obviously been active in Ghana for a long time um, and there's been a number of initiatives where we've tried to Ghana support locally, um, drive initiatives to, to benefit the local community. 
Um, as a result of that, there is considerable support to see this project go through to production. Um, I think the main thing here is to recognize that we, we understand the value of the project to Ghana um, and making sure that that is delivered to, to every stakeholder um, in appropriate manner um, is very important to us. And recognizing that importance, um, we are taking steps in, in this next period to more actively report against those ESG uh, metrics. Um, so you'll see more on that in yeah, the near term. I'll pass back to you now. Thank you, Henry. So um, just so a summary of where we are now. So obviously been expecting the mining lease. So we've been in discussions with Mincom quite a lot recently, and you'll appreciate together with MIF, the Sovereign Wealth Fund have been working hand in hand together. So uh, they were anticipating being able to give us the ML by the end of this month. However, you know, they have their internal processes to work through and they still have a little bit more to do, it seems. So I appreciate your patience on that. Um, we do expect it won't take very long. I think we're talking about, you know, days or a couple of weeks at most. So it won't actually impact our ability to deliver the project on time. So do bear with us. I would say with the Minerals Commission, I've been very pleased with the work they've been doing with us recently. I mean, they've also been looking at how they may streamline the remaining licensing steps that we will go through before we take the project to operations and breaking ground this time next year. And indeed, uh, also looking at expiration areas where we've had under application for some time to help us to see if we can get those licenses in our hands so that Len can get out and explore those and increase our resources still further. So do appreciate your patience. Obviously, we don't have control of MinCom, but it will get done, I am sure. Okay, in terms of the EPA permitting, that's a, a next step for us. What we'll be running through as soon as the ML is issued. So that solidifies the, the ML solidifies the area in which we're working and actually provides the basis for which the EPA, EPA work will be done. And then we're continuing to grow our resources. Uh, Len has set out lots of good potential across the license area, continuing to do work. Uh, the more areas we have under license, the more work we the offtake partner, I think, is a very important step for us. Obviously, it does provide us with some additional financing, but also identifies where our product will be going. Um, astounded, frankly, by the level of interest there is in that offtake. And obviously, the, the spodumene prices may have come off in the short term. But if you see the level of interest we receive in that offtake, and particularly for those periods 2026 to 2028, there's very little other offtake now available. Most of it's already spoken for. So um, very important step for us, but also uh, a means of, of securing another partner who takes the project forward with us. And in terms of operational readiness, obviously uh, Keith and the team have been working very hard to take us down the path to make sure we bring this, this project in on time and on budget, and we hope to continue to deliver shareholder value. Okay, and with that, I'm going to um, move on to the, the Q&A. Perfect. Neil, Len, Amanda, Keith, Henry, thank you very much indeed for your presentation this morning. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please do continue to submit your questions just by using the Q&A tab that's situated on the top right-hand corner of your screen. Uh, but just while the team take a few moments to review those questions that were submitted already, I would like to remind you that a recording of this presentation, along with a copy of the slides and the published Q&A, can be accessed via your investor dashboard. Um, guys, we've obviously received a number of questions that were both pre-submitted ahead of today's event and those that have come in during your presentation this morning. Um, so perhaps, Neil, if I could just hand back to you just to chair the Q&A session with the team, and then I'll pick up from you at the end. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so taking it from the top, we had a question. Are you able to share a timeline of when you anticipate completing offtake arrangements? I think Amanda already covered that in her presentation. But yes, in the Q1 next year, we, we plan to complete that process, and you'll see the result of it. Uh, I'm going to ask Keith to take the next one. Spodumene prices have weakened to $2,440 a ton. Battery inventory surpluses are being reported in China and battery makers are suffering from limited margins, weighing on their appetite for lithium products. Is this why the share price is so low as directors have said it would be around 4,610? What effect will this have on takeoff arrangements to fund development costs? Okay, thank you. So, uh, look, I think first of all, what we need to highlight is that uh, our long term pricing we used in the DFS was $1,410. Uh, so, even if you look at uh, the weakening prices as it sits today at 2500 we still 
uh, a healthy margin uh, below that. Um, so I, I don't think the share price uh, as we see it today is affected by that. I think it's more uh, activities we're seeing in other areas, uh, jurisdictions around us, in particularly in Mali. I think that plays on people's minds. Uh, you know, we have to be very clear that uh, Ghana is a very different jurisdiction to, than Mali. So so I don't think the spodumene price at the moment is playing a huge uh, impact on, on our share price. It's probably more other macro elements um, and, and the softening of the market in general. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, next question. One is a statement, uh, dear Mr. Herbert and management team. Firstly, well done for a listing miss proposed investment. Well, thank you very much for that. It was a lot of work, but obviously, I think very important for us to align interests with the government. Secondly, I've been holding shares for two years now, and despite increasing project finance certainty, improved drilling, and reserve estimates, and the recent MIF proposed investment, the London listed shares have basically halved. I'm sure you are equally perplexed by this. My question is, at what point will you consider moving to a primary listing on the USA in order to capture both a greater equity premium and more diversified and longer term shareholder base? Um, so I'll take that one. And I, what I will say is that, you know, we continually reach out to investors uh, around the world. Um, a, a primary listing in, in the US obviously is a, is a substantive step. Um, there may be a good time for that. I, I don't think we have quite the critical mass yet, but as we move forward with de-risking the project, we will continually look at the opportunity on the US. We do go over to the US. We do meet US investors. They do invest in ASS stocks more than the name stocks currently. Um, so obviously doing the asset list was a help there, but as we de-risk the project, I think we're going to see a lot more interest out of the US and obviously our association with Piedmont means that people do focus on our project over in the States as well. So we do hope to see more US representation in our shareholder base and yes, we'll keep under review the opportunity as it were to take it to the States if we get enough critical mass to do it now. Uh, okay, next question. Have we ordered any long lead items and have the module units been ordered? Keith. Sure. So the priority for us is really the mining contract to secure the build slots uh, for the mining gear. Uh, so that's why we're focusing to do the mining contract first. Uh, second to that uh, is long lead items for the MCC and the substation. Uh, and again, you know, one of the benefits we have is the power line is running across site. So for us to tap in, it's not a huge bolt uh, to get in there. So all the long lead items we will order in the first quarter of next year. Uh, so keep in mind, September next year is when we want to break ground. So that gives us nine months before we break ground. And you still have a bit of uh, float after breaking ground before the equipment need to arrive on site. And then lastly, just answering on the modular units, we've narrowed down from five to three vendors. Uh, and uh, we're now going into a competitive tender process with those three vendors. It's going to last about 12 weeks. Uh, we know we want to visit sites. We want to go and see where they've built modular units, uh, do our own due diligence on that. Uh, so, again, looking to award that uh, sometime in the uh, next quarter next year. Okay, thank you. During the period of the ML grants and breaking ground, the starting of the modular DMS unit, Will there be some further investment in upgrade the resource, especially with the MIF direct investment in ALL and that the three parties also share the project costs? Surely it would be a perfect time to crack on and really show there what there is while the supply for lithium remains strained. So I think we're talking about uh, exploration resource land. Do you want to take that one? Yeah, no, I uh, wholeheartedly agree. So um, I think it's a fantastic opportunity to throw some more dollars towards drilling and all the parties are really aligned in that regard. And it's certainly um, something that's keeping the exploration team busy in terms of looking at where next we um, put that uh, point, that drill rig to. So certainly front and center in our minds. Okay. Thank you. Martin from Mincom has spoken in one of his recent TV interviews about working with foreign companies to explore for more lithium and other areas of Ghana, suggesting their reward may be, uh, may be being granted rights over some of those areas. Surely now that the tie up with uh, ALL and MIF, do you see that the government has their tailor made partner in ALL with their expertise in exploration and mining for the Ghana lithium requirements going forward or at least a major partner in these aspirations uh, i think the the answer is yes 
Um, obviously, we're now working with the Sovereign Wealth Fund, which is part of the, the Ghana government. We work with Mincom. Obviously, they have a, a competitive situation in country and other people can apply for licenses. But um, thought, thanks to the, due, the, the good work done by Len and the team in the past, we identified a number of areas where we've got applications. And as I said earlier, Mincom is working with us to ensure that we can get those areas under license and uh, add further to our portfolio. We have seen some ASX companies, I think this is one for you, Keith, running DMS only processing that have run into production cost issues with the ore body containing errors of much less coarse progeny than anticipated. Is this something Atlantic is aware of and how do you intend to address this? Certainly. So I think there's three particular operations that's run into issues with DMS. Probably the most uh, evident and recent is core lithium that experienced much finer um, ore than what they anticipated. And their recoveries has been, you know, sub 40%. Uh, they've since picked up just to over 50%. And, and I have on good authority, they're continuing to increase that. Um, so we've absolutely learned our lessons from there. Um, you know, two other operations that's been struggling with the ore bodies, Mount Catlin and Mount Marion, for very different reasons. Uh, Mount Marion has significant basalt in their ore body, and Mount Catlin has significant fine grain that they went through for about six months last year. Um, so we're taking all the lessons from uh, these operators, uh, you know, and one that probably stands out for a very good startup is Sigma Lithium. Um, you know, Brian Talbot and his team there did a really good job in bringing that uh, operation into production with not a lot of effort and, and not a lot of stress. Um, so we're looking at everything around us and what's happening, um, and we are preparing and learning the lessons. And, uh, you know, one thing that we have been doing in the uh, both the feed and uh, um, initial design work is we've built a lot of redundancy into the plant. Um, so this is truly one going to be a world-class plant that has a lot of optionality, uh, if we get fine and grind ore, we can deal with that. If we've got fines in the feed, we can deal with that. If we've got basalt in the feed, we can deal with that. So we are really building a plan that's uh, quite robust for whatever the ore body throws at us. Thanks, Keith. I've got more, um, one more for you, which is asking about what if the ML was to slip for three months? What would it mean to our production timeline? Certainly. So we we currently do have a little bit of float left, but uh, anything after, I, I'm going to say probably November this year, uh, if it goes after November, then we're going to start that uh, commissioning, which is currently intended for January 26 uh, of the main plant. We're going to see that deteriorate. Uh, we won't see a huge impact on the modular units. Uh, modular units are quite rapidly deployed to site. Um, so we probably see, still see them come up online, uh, which is April um, 2025. Uh, but uh, you know we don't we don't anticipate uh, the ML to slip. Um, you know I know we've said that we want to deliver it in September, and we've repeatedly said that. Um, and and I, I, I might add September is not finished yet. So um, we are very close with our mining lease. Um, um, we, we're not even contemplating a slippage in the schedule at the moment. Okay, thank you, Keith. So another question we have on the exploration side, how quickly will you start to look at other country opportunities or do you see Ghana being the real diamond over the next seven years, Len? Well, the immediate value that we can add uh, by increasing the resource in Ghana is you know, significant. That's where a lot of um, where your MPV lies. But um, given um, our experience now in Africa, we're now you know, a proven explorer and moving into a developer of hard rock lithium assets. Uh, we're obviously getting inundated with opportunities within the region and Africa and even outside of Africa. So we certainly are uh, reviewing a lot of projects and we do, in, um, do intend to look at other opportunities um, at this point in time to, to grow our portfolio strategically. Thank you, Len. We had a further question. Uh, would you be looking at other critical mineral projects what do you think then? Look, I, I think at this stage, our bread and butter is spodumene, uh, hard rock pegmatites. So let's focus on that, uh, prove our, our wares and deliver on a mine. And who knows what the future will hold. But at this point in time, the focus is hard rock uh, lithium projects. Okay, thank you, Len. 
Uh, Keith, one for you. The company stakes production of 365,000 tons of SC6, but the majority of producers are opting for 5.5. Will Atlantic produce 5.5 concentrate to increase production figures? And what are the target total production figures of 6 and or 5.5? Sure. Thanks, Neil. So uh, currently the target is about exactly a half, 50-50 uh, between uh, 6 and 5.5. And really the main reason we have done it like that in the DFS is uh, our 50% offtake partner, Piedmont, uh, recently completed their DFS for the Tennessee uh, lithium hydroxide facility. And that's where half of our product is destined to go. Uh, they have completed uh, the majority of their detailed engineering work on a 6% product. Um, so we are honoring that agreement. Um, however, we've been in talks with Piedmont and, you know, at the end of the day, it's about molecule units uh, or molecules. So the more uh, molecules we can put into the hydroxide facility, the better for everyone. Um, so the plant can do anything from 5 to 6.2. Uh, it's really just getting an agreement uh, with Piedmont whether they want to accept that 5.5%. Uh, that Thank you very much. So I've got one for you, Amanda. When will MIF's investment become binding? Uh, so at the moment we're um, doing the contracts that are required. You can imagine because there's an investment both local co in Ghana plus at um, Atlantic level, there are a number of contracts we need to do. You'll remember back to when we did the Piedmont deal, um, we announced it on the 1st of July and um, the contracts were completed on the 31st of August. So I expect it to take two to three months to complete all the contracts. Um, yeah, and once they're complete, um, the notices will be given and the um, investment will be set. Okay. Thank you, Amanda. And how certain are you, Amanda, that those contracts will be completed? I'm pretty certain. We've kind of drafted most of them now. We kind of go into the lawyer-on-lawyer lawyer negotiations on the finer details. Um, that can take a while. Um, but, um, yeah, no, very pretty certain. Okay. Thank you very much. So a question for Len, are you anticipating grants of expiration permits on and around Edgesimanku Hill? Look, um, we do currently hold licenses around Edgesimanku Hill, that's APAM East and APAM West. So yes, I do believe we'll be granted our additional licenses around Edgesimanku Hill. Edgesimanku Hill itself, where one of our JV partners holds an application over, is, is more challenging from a social point of view. Um, but we've got our application in place and we're first in the queue. So it's a question of you know, ongoing canvassing with the, the government. And now, I guess, with the MIF investment, we're more aligned in that regard. And I believe once we're in production, there'll be a, a, a bigger, more questions asked around additional material coming into that feed and Edges Manker Hill will be a key part of that. So I'm, I'm hopeful that we will get granted that license in due course. Thank you, Len. Uh, so we have a question from George's. Um, uh, can you discuss the range of funding shortfall and options to raise funds? Amanda. Okay, so at the moment on the DFS, um, we do we have a 38 million to 40 million um, shortfall of the Atlantic funding that we need to put in. Um, that doesn't include the work on the feldspar circuit and on the flotation, so there may be additional funds into the future. Um, right now, um, the biggest um, way to get funds is through the offtake process. That number is quite significant, way you know more than double what um, we have um, needed for the de for the build of a warrior the, of the main mine. But what um, I suppose the you know at, I had you know up to 20 parties kind of contacting me regularly about the process. We've now gone wider so there are a lot of parties in there on the offtake process. We equally have many um, parties on the debt financing side who which we uh, don't envisage undertaking right now, but that is an option into the future where we, we could do. Um, and the, you know, our capital raise we could do as well. Now, you know, given the um, areas around the business development and exploration and aggressively drilling something, you know, we, we will look at the right funding option um, at any time. The offtake process I see is um, directly funding a warrior. 
um, because it, you know, it will be a prepayment and we will be delivering um, production um, for that, um, you know, offtake funding. So uh, that is an, a kind of an aware funding option. But if we want to rapidly expand elsewhere, we will um, look to raise funds in other ways in the future. Okay. Thank you very much, Amanda. Uh, oh, well, we have uh, a question from Clay. Will you notify the market as soon as you receive the mining lease approval or will it wait to 7 a.m. in the morning? It largely depends as to, to when we actually get it, um, but we will put it out as, you know, in shorter time span as we possibly can. Um, I would say I'm very confident we're going to get it. Pity it's taken this long. Obviously, we don't actually control the Minerals Commission. Did have expectation that they would they would do it this this month, but um, yeah, I do expect it in the next uh, few days or weeks. So please bear with us. Um, I don't think we've got any other questions Neil, outstanding. Neil, absolutely, and Len, Amanda, Keith, uh, Henry, as well. Thank you very much indeed for addressing all of those questions that came in from investors this morning. And of course, as usual, if there are any further questions that do come through, we'll make these available to you immediately after the presentation has ended. Uh, just for you to review, to then add any additional responses, of course, where it's appropriate to do so. And we'll publish all those responses out on the Investor Meet Company platform. Um, but Neil, perhaps before really just looking to redirect those on the call to provide you with their feedback, which I know is particularly important to yourself and the company, if I could please just ask you for a few closing comments just to wrap up with that'd be great absolutely so uh, first of all thank everybody for attending what we're actually doing here is obviously building a very significant mine as we set out the beginning this is one of the top 10 uh, lithium spodumene mines in the world once it's built we think there's a lot more potential beyond that as well regionally in ghana and indeed as len set out you know we do look further afield we think the opportunity ghana first and foremost is there we've situated ourselves with this agreement with mif uh, I'm working with Mincom to be, if you like, the, the primary lithium company in country. Um, and we think there's a lot more potential than what we can do taking it forward. Uh, in the short term, you can expect to see the, the ML grant and indeed the completion of the, the MIF documentation and getting them on board. Um, we do our expectations very high on both of those. We do expect to complete them. Obviously, it's not entirely in our hands, but the, the timing of which uh, we do work with them almost daily to ensure that we can bring these things in. And indeed, beyond that, you can see the offtake process completed early next year, and we will continually put out more results. It's a very exciting project. I think the backdrop of the market, the lithium price has fallen off, but I think as Keith put it, said it out earlier, you're looking at one of the lowest cost operation producers in the world when this project comes on stream. So this is a very robust project, which will stand up very well, regardless of the lithium price. Um, we've been using lithium prices in their modeling far below current prices, which are obviously full since last year. So this is um, really doesn't have any impact on us what's happening today. Uh, thank you very much. So we have one last question. Will there be a Ghana listing as has been suggested by the government? Amanda. Uh, look, as I uh, mentioned previous, there will be a Ghana listing. So as part of the mining regulations um, in Ghana and the local content um, regulations, um, all mining companies are required to list on the Ghana Stock Exchange um, within five years of production. Okay. Thank you, Amanda. All right. So I think that, that pretty brings to an end this, this, uh, this session. Thank you very much. Neil, that's great. Thank you once again for updating investors uh, this morning. Could I please ask investors not to close this session as you'll now be automatically redirected for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the management team can better understand your views and expectations. This won't take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure be greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Atlantic Lithium Limited, we would like to thank you for attending today's presentation. That now concludes today's session. So good morning to you all. Thank you. Thank you.